out to his uh, mother, Terry, uh, brother, Kevin, Connie, sister, Lori, to the whole family. It's, uh, it's great to see you again. And it, it means so much to this community that you come out here and honors us with your presence. So today we gather to formally celebrate Pastor John Chapman as we rename this annex. Uh, what you'll know is that John Chapman was a great warrior, a steadfast friend, a selfless patriot, and above all, a man of unquestionable character. I think it's important that we do so that we always remember and never forget his sacrifices. So this Chapman Annex might stand as an enduring reminder to all about the ideals of selfless service, about an unwavering commitment to duty and to fellow man, and so that we can happily characterize what John Chapman did in the service of our nation, this country. Pastor Sergeant Chapman was awarded the nation's highest award in honor of his recognition for those actions on a cold march in Afghanistan exactly 18 years ago today. It was a day that would find John engaged in mortal combat atop an 11,000 foot peak at Takargar. A day when John would risk all for the men that stood on his left and on his right. It was an unbreakable commitment that has bonded warriors for centuries. It's a commitment to those who never, to those who never had the honor to wear the uniform like you done today, or walk the crucible combat, or, of combat that they can't fully appreciate. When Master Chardon Chapman learned that Neil Roberts had been tossed out of the helicopter and had fallen directly into, into an Al Qaeda stronghold. There was no stopping John. He would not dream of not going back to get him. So he voluntarily reinserted into the enemy hotbed and he leapt into action. First there, he led up the steep incline in thigh deep snow under direct enemy combat fire. He fearlessly stormed the nearest bunker, quickly clearing it the enemy. And upon seeing his team take direct enemy fire from an adjacent machine gun emplacement, he abandoned all safety of cover and rushed to their aid. Exposed 12 meters from the enemy in direct line of intense fire, John was struck by Al Qaeda forces. He was down but he wasn't out of the fight. Despite suffering severe mortal wounds, John pressed on. And even as Don broke over Takagar, and the prospect of his own rescue was within reach, John refused to abandon his team. It just wasn't who he was. Knowing what lay in wait for the approaching quick reaction force, John left his cover one last time and in an act of extraordinary courage and selfless service, he paid the ultimate sacrifice. John died as he lived, a man of tremendous character, a man who would stop at nothing to defend his fellow warriors. And while it's important to remember Master Sergeant John Chapman, it was never about him. You see, John, he didn't serve for recognition. He served for men like Petty Officer First Class Neil Roberts, Senior Airman Jason Cunningham, Army Sergeant Bradley Cross and Phyllis Stebeck, for Army Corporal Matthew Commons, and for Army Specialist Mark Anderson, men who, made, who never made it off Takagara that day. For John, it was about, always about, those on his left and those on his right. It was about others. If you were to visit the Pentagon Hall of Heroes today, you would find John's name appropriately on those walls. And on occasions, I'm asked to preside over ceremonies there, and it's truly sobering. As I stand there on that stage, often promoting our most senior officers 
to positions of great responsibility, I stare out at the, at the uh, names on the walls there. Storied names like John Levito, William Pitsenbarger, and now Master Sergeant John Chapman. You can't help but feel an incredible weight of responsibility that floods over you. It's something that's tangible. Your shoulders grow heavy, the air seems thicker. It seems like they're standing there right next to you. And there in the presence of men like John, you can't help but be humble. You ask yourself, would they be proud? Would they say we're doing enough? Are we getting it right? It's what I call my daily mirror check. And it's fitting that you all will now have that same honor here. These gates through which Sergeant Chapman walked 30 years ago will now bear his name. That those brave men and women who follow in his footsteps and commit themselves to live by the ethos of first there that others may live shall forever be reminded of John's uncompromising service to this nation and of his unbreakable commitment to his brothers and sisters in arms. That you too may be blessed with your own daily mirror check and the pride that comes with living a life of character. May God continue to bless America, our Air Force, the Chapman family, and the storied men and women of the Special Warfare Community. Thank you very much. Thank you, General Wilson. It is now my pleasure to invite the Commander, Air Education and Training Command, Lieutenant General Webb, to provide remarks. Morning, everybody. So I'm getting ready to leave work yesterday evening. I'm headed out the door, I'm talking to the team. They said, hey, sir, Special Warfare is going to make a weather call at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. I kind of chuckled to myself and said, there's no way in hell we're doing this in ceremony indoors if I know Special Warfare. So it was at 6.45 this morning as I arrived in the parking lot, took one step out of my car and dipped my right foot in about six inches of a torrential river that was running down the parking lot. I was like, perfect! The weather's beautiful, of course. Val, Brianna, Lori, Kevin and Connie, Terry, all the Chapman family and friends, Gold Star families, one and all, you uplift us every time with your presence. Thank you for being here. The Airmen of the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Space Force, San Antonians, and all friends of the Air Force, Thank you very much for being here on this special occasion. So what I want to do for the next couple of minutes is talk about a career of standing shoulder to shoulder with what we now know today as our special warfare team. As a longtime helicopter pilot, I've stood aside from them for the better part of 35 years. I was first introduced to special warfare via the PJs because uh, my first assignment was in rescue. Hill Air Force Base. The PJs were part of the air crew. The PJs were, and come on you guys, you know it's true, little needy, little needy, little demanding, but you knew you always wanted the PJs on your team, always. And some of the ones that made the most uh, impact on me were reservists like Alan Manuel, Guy Manis. They were competent, they were courageous, and they were commanding. So I was that I came to Special Operations in 1987. Special Tactics was on base. They were a little bit separate from the rest of the flying units. I have to admit that it was a little hard in my younger days to delineate the ground soft elements 
from our, our folks, but I flew with them all the time. They were mostly embedded at that time with the ground soft elements, but I can tell you my appreciation grew for them over time immensely. In Mogadishu, we had heroes like Tom, or, excuse me, Tim Wilkinson, Air Force Cross winner, Scott Fales, Silver Star Award winner. There was Operation Assured Response with the non-combatant evacuation operation in Liberia. I flew in Vinny Savino, who had a chainsaw on his back and took care of the rest of the trees in the uh, embassy that I didn't already chop down with the helicopter blades. Vinny slept beside his radio for seven days solid as we flew helicopters in and out of that embassy taking Americans out. Viking 6. In Bosnia in the mid-90s, there was people like Kurt Buller, who led his men with a ball of energy, ideas, tenacity. Again, competent, courageous, and commanding. Very early in Operation During Freedom, there was folks like Mike Flatten. Aside from not having showered for three months, Mike was running right shoulder to shoulder with General Mattis and ran Kandahar Tower on his own. People like Bill Adams, Eric Nielsen, Pat Malone, who was a Kentucky Guardsman, Eric Ray, on and on, you get the point. I was their commanding officer for all of these guys. But I can tell you, I felt and was reassured constantly by their competence, their courage, and their leadership. So it was that my confidence in and outlook on special warfare was already etched in the events as the events of 4th of March 2002 unfolded. So as you already heard 18 years ago today, numerous Americans embarked on an offensive to rid the Taliban and Al-Qaeda of a stronghold near the Afghan, Afghanistan-Pakistan border. And of course that unfortunate series of events led to over 80 wounded and 8 American service members losing their lives. The heroism and valor of the number of special operators were particularly well chronicled. And while there are a number of extremely high awards presented in the aftermath of this battle, the story of John Chapman's gallantry simply stands above them all. If we ever needed an example of Air Force Corps values in action, John Chapman is it. And while I can assure you that integrity, excellence, and of course service to the point of self-sacrifice or the baseline, even more so was competence, courage, and commanding presence. Competence. Chappie's mastery not only of, the, of his own weapons, but I was able to help him fend off dishes, RPGs, automatic weapons fire, but also hand-to-hand -hand fighting for control of the ground from which withering and delayed fire was cutting down his teammates. This sums up succinctly his competence as a warrior. Courage? Wait, seriously? Volunteering to re-enter the fray where they had just lost a teammate. Engaging multiple enemy fires by himself over several hours to include hand-to-hand -hand combat. Again, literally defines physical and moral courage. Commanding presence. Chappy led a charge up a 30 degree slope in waist in deep snow by himself when the others fell behind because he had to act immediately. The inflated fire was too heavy. And finally, late in the ordeal, John, overcoming incapacitating injuries, stepped for cover to provide life saving cover fire for the inbound helicopter that was landing to reinforce the beleaguered position. A move that ultimately cost him his life. That helicopter, the force that was on that helicopter, was the one that, while sustaining multiple casualties on, of their own, would ultimately rescue and recover living and dead American warriors from the top deck. So John Chapman's story is a story of Air Force Corps values in action. It certainly is a story of heroism as well, and of valor. It's also a story of confidence, humble confidence and of leadership. And so when I think of John Chapman, I think of a continuum. It's kind of a special warfare continuum. John and his conspicuous gallantry that day, and in fact his whole career, represent the best of who we, airmen, aspire to be. 
He also obviously represents the ideals of special warfare. However, as I'm sure John would be the first to say, at our essence, all of us are but small pieces that comprise a bigger picture that is the Air Force and the profession of arms. We all join to be something bigger than ourselves, be something part of bigger than ourselves. We aspire to contribute to our national and service ideals, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. And in that sense, John represents a continuum of the excellence that has gone before, the excellence of today, and the excellence that is still to come. You see it play out every day in special warfare since 2002. Names like Park Shoes, Clyde Tudor, Rob Gutierrez, Alan Yoshida, Dylan Elgin, Ish Viegas, Jeff Gilmain, Jamie Clark, Michael Parolio, and on and on and on. But the point of this that we're getting ready to unveil isn't, and it doesn't just apply to special warfare. Airmen, all airmen who pass through this gate, and they pass through for BMT as well as for the special warfare, will gaze upon this welcome sign to the Chapman Annex and know that they may, may very well be called upon to be the next Chappies. You in this crowd may be called upon to be the next Chappie. Don't take this lightly. There will be commanders like me that are counting on you in the direst of circumstances to be our John Chapman. Confident, courageous, commanding. Thank you all for being here on this momentous occasion and God bless you all.
Chapman Training Annex.
Thank you, Ms. Nessel, for your inspiring words. Ceremonies such as today are always tempered by the solemn remembrance of our fallen teammates who gave their lives in service to this great nation and the Gold Star families they left behind. To end today's ceremony in honor of Master Sergeant John Chapman and all those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, we invite you to join us in a time-honored Air Force Special Warfare Tradition Memorial Push-Ups. Special Warfare Training Wing Command Chief Jamie Clark will lead us in the event. Before we start, I would like to invite all Special Warfare Airmen, both past and present, to please move toward the stage for the Memorial Push-Up. Everybody's invited to participate. Find some real estate. Thank you for your attendance. This concludes our event. Oh my God, if I gotta sell